If you are a writer, how can you add structure and produce finalized works while maintaining an environment that allows you to be your most intuitive and creative self? In the following showcase, Anya, aka A.S. Renner, shows the way. Anya has published nonfiction books on minimalism, self-publishing, and nutrition. As a coach for intuitive writing, she supports creatives in finding their voice and helps them find the answer to the question, how can something you're so passionate about be so hard? For her, Obsidian is the perfect playground for creative endeavors, a safe space that you can design according to your personal needs. In the following, you will hear about Anya's struggles with writing, the kind of workplace she's created to write so well, and how she uses folders. Let's check out Anya's process now. And I want to start off with a thank you, like a lot of people did before me. And I, of course, want to thank you, Nick, for the course and Crew15 and Martin, who's here as well. And I also want to have a shout out to Elena because I use her custom theme. I think it's very beautiful and I love it. And I also want to shout out to Sana because she inspired me to use emojis, as you will see later. And a bit about me. I am a writer of fiction and nonfiction, and I'm a writing coach as well. And my main interest in the beginning of the course, I thought I'm just doing this yeah, to be able to create content better. And yeah, when I answered the questionnaire in the beginning, I realized, no, it's all about sense making for me. This is the most important part for me. And also what I really like about writing the process of sense making. And even with my novel writing, I really enjoy to understand the worlds I'm writing about, the people I'm writing about. So sense making is biggie for me. And as a writer, of course, I have some struggles still um for instance with non-fiction writing i had stopped writing non-fiction for a while i have published some books on minimalism nutrition and other topics i'm really personally interested in but i always felt a bit like an imposter because i yeah i just um, got the ideas from other people and i kind of wrote about their thoughts and ideas and i never felt like i was writing the things that were going through my head and so it really helped me this linking your thinking that I can now also make new connections and yeah, I can go deeper into the topics and get create ideas on my own and also bring them into my writing. So this helps me a lot. And another struggle I have with writing novels, I, I very often reach mental squeeze points, like Nick um, used to say, because in novels are very complex and you have the characters, their background stories and yeah, the places you write about, there's so much information you have to bring together to have then a story in the end. And yeah, I very often get overwhelmed at some point with all this stuff and MOCs really now help me to, especially when I take breaks and come back to a novel project, I can really see everything in one place and it's, helping me a lot and what's also helping me is when I'm in the flow of writing I can really just use those links to make connections and so it really supports my flow in writing as well yeah and what is important for me as a writer is a good workplace a clean space and I love this picture of the matrix where Morpheus has this white room I think people who saw the movie know this is just this clean space and he can just pull in what, yeah, he wants to show and work with and then he can push it out again afterwards and has always this clean space to start off from. And this is very important for me as a creative person to have this kind of space. That's why, yeah, I created my world in this way. You will see soon. And What's also very important to me is the control. I'm kind of a control freak. <laughs> I really want to have the feeling of that I know where things are. And yeah, so that's why I, at the beginning of the course, thought I will always yeah, have my folders and not um, get rid of them at some point because I thought my folder structure is quite good. I can show this to you how it looked like. At the beginning, I had like um, folders according to my writing process. So the first big part would be the nonfiction stuff. So I had sources, different folders for articles and everything and my own thoughts. And then of course, atomic notes, MOCs. And then I would go and create blog posts from the MOCs, books, workshops, whatever. <laughs> and
and yeah, here in this part, you see the that I had for my novel projects. I have several projects, and every project would have an have a folder with subfolders. And so I thought hey, I will still need those folders. But in unit four, I decided to take the leap and try something new. And so I will show you what my home looks like now. Or maybe I can even make it a bit bigger. I have only three folders left. And it's the first um, palm tree is folder is uh, my nonfiction stuff. Everything is in here. Then I have the templates in here and the third one is my fiction writing. What I have here usually is that um, I have for each project a different emoji, like for this novel, for instance. Um, when I open this, this would be a home note for my novel, Coffee, Death and Cigarettes. So you can see each file that is here has the um, coffee cup emoji. And then we have the different kinds of um, notes. I can open this up a bit more like diary entries. I have a novel diary for each novel and scenes or questions I need to answer. And yeah, um, the home note is also the space that can really help me see everything in one place. And yeah, I mean, I have just started doing this like two weeks ago. So I will see um, how this will go on. I think those should be empty. I don't know why they are here now. And um, yeah, I feel like um, this is a good way to sort my files because I actually don't want to go in here and look for something. I will use different ways to search stuff like the search, for instance, I would use, I would never go in there, but I still have this feeling of some of order because I use the emojis. So this really helps me a lot. And so when I start my work day, I will just have this home note and this clean space and I can just really go in here and I have some daily tasks that just will get me going. And for instance, my, this is quite an interesting point as well because I know some people also have handwritten notes. So what I do now is every day I go back to the day before and go through the handwritten notes from the day before and then bring in what is important to Obsidian as well. And just let me look at the time. Oh, it's still time. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking so fast that there's still some time left. And so what I really love about this um, clean space, because when I, as a writer, I just start to write very fast sometimes. I just wanted to show. And when I have ideas and even maybe links and create some new notes, I can just have my yeah, emojis there. This would be my thought emoji. Oh, I can also show you my um, emoji cheat sheet. But what I was just wanted to show is that it's really easy for me to um, yeah, clean my space. So when I have at the end of the day, several notes here, they show up here and I can just yeah, move them at the end of the day here. And so I always have this clean space, but I also, to make sure I don't just put stuff in there. I also have this open a random note and go back. So I really want to stay in contact with everything I do. I don't want to just throw stuff somewhere and never work with it again. And I think what I like to do as well is go to the graph. You can also see here, the, the those are all my novel projects. They are very separate from everything. That's just um, because they are. <laughs> and this, the big thing here is all the nonfiction stuff. And what I really like to do is also go here to the stuff here and see if I can make some connection. So I really go also every day back to my notes and see if I can make new links. And if I can delete something, sometimes you also can delete stuff. Yeah, and I have an emoji cheat sheet just to, let me see. Yeah, where I, where you also can quite see this is still again the um, folder structure I had before. This would be the fiction stuff. So every novel would have a home note that will be seen with this triangle. And the good thing is the triangle will always be on top of the notes. So this is very really good, I think. And yeah, then you have the different kinds of notes, of course. And with the fiction, I also have just like those. Um, the sources, the different emojis and diary dreams. So everything is still there. So even when I, 
if I should decide, ah, this is too much for me, I have to go back to some folders, I don't know, I will always find the stuff back and yeah, but so far I have been using this for like two or three weeks now, I'm really happy with it, especially with this clean space I have here and I've always found everything I needed to find. So, so far with the amount of notes I have right now, I'm yeah happy with the structure I have here. Thank you. Thank you, Anya. Let's give Anya a round of applause. Yeah, yeah. Oh, was that your timer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got it all in. That's yeah. great. Seeing Anya's whole workflow shows what's possible for creative writers using Obsidian. Anya shows how the writer can use it to write intuitively, write well, and have fun while doing it. As always, there are many more fascinating and inspiring people I hope to showcase because they show how empowering and personal the process of thinking and managing knowledge should be. What did you like most about Anya's showcase? Let us know in the comments below. And until next time. <laughs>